uh, it, it means it is not like one aspect, ahinsa, diet, health and environment. What is the comprehensive approach? Uh, health is Im significant important, diet is significant important, ahinsa is the important and environment is impro important. How do you do the comprehensive approach to practice Jainism? Okay. And uh, this, this is also a long presentation. Uh, I will try my best to finish it up in time. Okay. And uh, see, let's start. The holistic approach of to Jain spirituality. Comprehensive means analyzing the whole system of Jain beliefs and practices with respect to ahinsa, compassion, diet, finance, health, and environment, rather than simply emphasizing its individual component, which are like ahinsa and uh, compassion, diet, six external finances, six internal finances. No, that is where and then nirjira occurs, the finance, which is the nirgira and we got six external, six internal. The health, without the health, you cannot practice Jain religion. You got to, because if you are, if you are suffering for any disease or anything, all right, it is extremely difficult to practice Jain religion. Jain religion is the religion of reflection, bhav. And when you are suffering, it is extremely difficult to have a proper reflection and that you will get the you know, really good benefits uh, with, the, with the healthy environment and the environment. <coughs> the goal of Jainism, the goal of Jainism is very simple in a sense, total liberation from karma. This is the one way of looking at it. Okay. Total liberation of karma from Mithyatva and Kashar. These are the two things, if you remember you now these two things, Mithyatva and Kashar, everything else uh, is very minor. It's really not holding you back. These are the only things that holding you back. These are the holding, what I mean by that, to attain liberation. A single component is a monia karma, which is nothing but mithyatva and kashaya. So monia karma, you call it, or you call it separately, mithyatva, which is the ignorance about reality, about your own self. We act as if that my soul, my body is my soul. That's what I am. That is what you know, if you sit back, think about it, we all agree. But when the action comes, if somebody insults you, he's not insulting your soul. What he is insulting is your body, in a sense, because this is how you recognize. And once you recognize that way, that you get associated with it. And this is the things, the goal of Jainism, liberation from that. How do you liberate? How do you liberate all karma which are attached to your soul? Okay, that's the key thing in mind. Karma attaches not to your body. Karma attaches to your soul. Okay, and this is the relationship between the two, you know what you are you know, thinking. So, it's a two-step two process. How do you remove all the karma which is associated to your soul? And that is why the soul is impure. It's because of the association of the karma, the soul is impure, is not pure. Once you remove the karma, then soul becomes pure and a pure soul has possesses infinite knowledge Okay, infinite darshan, 
इन्फिनिट हैप्पीनेस और यू नो चारित्र कंडक्ट एंड इन्फिनिट ऑल दिस फोर इन्फिनिट इज द फोर मेजर वैल्यूज qualities of the soul you know that will open up and you realize kebadna that's it so there are two stop process one is the samvar stoppage of new karma via right conduct just to make sure how you can get rid of all karma first you close the new door for the new karma to attach to you and that you do with samvar Somewhere means stoppage of the new karma via right conduct. Significant important. When you do the external activities, but if you understood properly and do the right conduct, then you will be reflecting that way too. If you don't understand what you are doing and just doing the things, then it is not going to help. So make sure. you need to do but you have to do all the activities what you do daily with understanding and reflecting accordingly that is the samvar stoppage of new karma via right conduct and the nirjara the nirjara is exhaustion of the old karma which you already have attached to your soul okay you remove those karma which is already attached to your soul which you acquired in the past and they produce the result before they produce the result you remove this karma it is called sakam nirjara nirjara has a, a two aspect a kam nirjara where you don't have to do anything and sakam nirjara is another okay, you with your tap finance you are removing those karma before they produce the result It's because if they don't if you if they they haven't produced the result there is no chance you are going to involve in kashai but when karma produces the result at that time it is extremely difficult to keep our mind balanced that is the nirjara so nirjara sakam nirjara is the only one will help you to liberate akam nirjara will do the same thing but it when karma is producing the result at that time after a result is produced karma will be removed automatically is a natural process okay if somebody comes and insults me that means the karma is already active now in that kind of the environment if i can keep myself balanced internally not internally i burn up but oh Oh, I am a great person, and you know, this is what I think. And you know, how would people will feel if I get angry? Okay, and I suppress my anger. That is not the case I am talking about. If you, if you totally understand the situation, then anger will not arise in you. That is the sakam nirjara, and that kind of the nirjara is the only one will can take you to liberation. by removing the old karma acquired karma okay so these are the two process very important but fundamentally you should know what the samvar is samvar stops bringing the new karma and nirjara uh, removes the echo. already you whatever karma you already have it and with this samvar and nirjara you will be able to reach the liberation means you can purify your soul okay now sambhar has what are the things in sambhar stoppage of new karma via right conduct what are the conducts external conduct we are talking here now 
okay that includes ahimsa compassion aparigraha anekantvad physical yoga yoga and spiritual reflection so these are the kind of jain practices in real sense it's a five samitis three guptis ten yati dharma the das lakshana things 12 bhavana all reflections if you see 22 parisa and a five khanda okay when we discuss somewhere on its own you will know we will discuss all these topics this is just to give you idea what it includes me the nirjana exhaustion of the old karma via pinams which are the six external pinamsis and six internal pinamsis okay and the six internal one is the real cause to remove the karma but external one is needed your conduct is needed you cannot just do only internal without doing external one so they go hand in hand all right so some were right can kind a of guideline for practicing ahimsa for the lay people now here is the everything is important in these slides okay so just think about it and reflect it properly non violence is the highest principle of jain religion however the life cannot exist without violence because you cannot survive without violence you you got to eat at least vegetarian food but vegetarian food you are killing the life of one sense living being there is no doubt about it okay hence for our existence food and shelter and without food and shelter human life cannot survive we must follow the path of minimum violence now this is the very key things you need to understand how do we define the minimum violence under our environment okay you cannot just go in indian environment in america or any other place where you are or even in india depending upon where you are okay and in your situation how do you define for our survival the minimum violence and that is the things i'm going to talk a little bit about it because that's a holistic comes into the picture okay we will see each and every component we will brush up and if you still have any question we will go into depth in detail okay so that is the but this is the principle guideline for practicing ahimsa for the lay people and this is not talking for monks and nuns okay monks and nuns they have renounced everything they don't even actively involve for their survival the lay people are have the responsibility in jain sangh to provide food and shelter to monks and nuns okay that's the the survival so for them there are different rules of practice but for lay people this is the rule here we have to follow the minimum balance for them no violence absolutely no violence okay if they go for a food only the lay people have prepared for themselves they take just a little where they don't have to recook the food okay so the violence is not for them what we have done if we have prepared any food for monks and nuns they will not accept it because we did the violence for them okay whether they do it themselves or somebody else does it for them it carries the same meaning that's that is the point okay all right so let's go further now basic principle of minimum violence for lay people the degree of violence inflicted is proportional to the number of senses a living being possesses that's the degree of violence no more senses whom you are hurting or killing 
more sins, okay, more violence. If if the violence to a living being, which has more senses like five, four, three, in this order, is more sinful act than thousands of one sense living being. This is one of the most important uh, fundamentals of Jain religion. Okay, what they are saying, even though every soul is same, but a soul with one sense, they born and die in one second, I mean, one samay, but in one second, like 17 and a half times. So if you think about that, okay, so the, they are far away from liberation. Why I say it? Okay, first of all, to become liberation, to attain liberation, you have to have a five senses properly developed and you have to have a fully developed mind, which only human pieces you know, contains. And that's why human life is the most important thing what we have to attain liberation. No animals can attain. Animals can attain samyatva, if at all, like if, if you want to like the dog or lion or seal, but there are several stories in the literature exist. But human body is the essential for the liberation. So if you hurt any human being or kill any human being for your survival, that is the highest sin because that person was closer to the liberation. Whether he will achieve or not is one thing, but if it else is achieved it, he is very close to it. So that is the last things that's what you heard is the human being. Now violence to animals is the next highest because their mind is developed, but now not fully developed as like a human being. The only test you can see, human beings can do meditation. No other animals can do meditation. You cannot observe the observer. That is the function of meditation. Can you watch yourself, what you are thinking, what you're doing, okay? So you can become gnata drashta, knower and observer. That is the capacity only human being have it. And that is why you get this life with fully developed mind. This is the only opportunity we have it and never miss any moment even, okay? to do any good things that you can accomplish. So violence to a living being, which has more senses, is more sinful act than the thousands of one sense living being. Keep that thing in the mind. Violence to a living being, which has more senses, also creates a greater impact on environment. If you kill any panchendri animal, it has a greater impact on environment than like if you boil the water or you know if you fire or anything else okay that is a significant so you got a double benefit in that sense that okay you are saving the environment by using only one sense living being for your survival then anything directly or indirectly related to five senses, animals. So the order of violence, human being is the highest. Second is the animals with five senses. Then the insect, bacteria, amino, that, and ultimately least violence is the one sense being, which is vegetables, water, air, earth, fire. Okay. Since the life can survive by consuming only one sense living being, and when I say life can survive healthily, okay, Jainism believes in vegetarianism, 
even though vegetables have innumerable or infinite living beings which are killed for our survival. Humans need for food and shelter is for survival. You cannot survive if you don't have a food and shelter. That is the human need. Animals, only the food, okay, they can exist anywhere, okay, any, any place is, I mean, just I'm kind of eager to look at in a reasonable comparison point of view, okay. Next, 